Welcome. I've done some previous videos on AppCacher NG, and I'll put a link in the description to those videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about installing AppCacher NG on a Synology NAS using Docker. So AppCacher NG is an app package manager cache. So if you run Ubuntu systems, Raspberry Pi, Debian, um, Linux Mint, those all use the app package manager, and this will allow you to cache the packages. So if you have multiple machines, when one machine downloads a package, it will get cached on the cache, and then if another machine requests that same package, it will fulfill it with the cache, so it doesn't have to go over the internet. Also, if you're using virtual machines in development and things like that, and you're constantly building new systems over and over, it can really speed up that process if you have a cache locally on your network. So I'm logged into the DSM here, and I have the Docker icon on my desktop, but if you don't have it, you can go into the package center and just search for Docker and then install it. And if it's not on your desktop, it'll be up here in the main menu and you can find it there. You could right click on it and say add to desktop if you wanted to. So to start, I want to create a directory for AppCacherNG to store the packages. So I'll open up File Station here. I'll go here under Create and I'll say create a new shared folder. And I'll just name this apt-cacher-ng. I'll turn off the recycle bin, I'll hit Next. I'm not going to encrypt this, I'll hit next. You could put a quote on here if you wanted to, I'm not concerned about that. I'll hit next. And I'll hit apply. So I've been running an AppCacher NG in a virtual machine and it has about 20 gigabytes on it and I've used that with many different systems. So now it's asking me what permissions I want to grant. I'll say I want read write for Rick and I'll hit okay. So now we have this folder here. I'll close out of this. I'll close out of this. I'll go back and now I'll open up Docker. And now I'll go down to registry. I'll search for app cache ng here. So it's apt dash and then it's cache er dash ng. There's also some software called App Cacher, and App Cacher NG, in my opinion, is better. It's uh, more versatile. You can run multiple systems on it. So I use mine to cache Ubuntu and Raspberry Pi at the same time, and it doesn't have any problem doing that. So I'll search for that. It should be the top pick here. It's this Sam Erzben slash App Cacher NG. So I'll click on that. I'll hit download. It says, please choose a tag, and it has latest, and it has some versions here. So I'll just do latest. I'll hit select. It'll download that under image. Okay, that's finished, so I'll select this now. I'll hit launch. It'll bring up the settings. I want to click on advanced settings. I'll click on volume, and I want to say add folder, and I'll select the app cacher ng folder we just created. I'll hit select, and then under the mount path, I'll do forward slash var forward slash cache forward slash app dash cacher dash ng. So I'll put a link in the description of my website where I'll have this where you can copy and paste it if you'd like. And also I have some commands we're gonna type in later in the video and I'll put those on my website also. So there's nothing I need to do on the network tab. On the port settings tab, we have this auto here under local port and container port should be 3142. I'll change this to also 3142. So I don't have anything under links or environment set up. I'll hit apply here. I'll hit next. It's checked where it says run this container after the wizard is finished. I'll hit apply. Now if we go up here under container, we see app cacher ng is running. So now I'll open up a new tab on my browser and I'll enter in the IP address of my NAS and then colon 3142. So if you see this web page, you know app cacher ng is up and running. The next thing I'm going to go over is setting up a client using this. So the instructions are really right here. So I'll minimize this a little bit, I'll shrink it. I'm already logged into a terminal. So this is an Ubuntu instance I have on another computer. So it wants us to create this file here. I'll paste that into my terminal. So I want to say sudo space nano space and I'll put the name of that file. It's forward slash etc forward slash apt forward slash apt dot conf dot d forward slash zero zero apt proxy. And I have this on my website, but you can copy it from this page also. I'll hit enter. I'll type in my password. Now you can paste in this line here. 
And I need to change the IP address on here because this is the internal Docker IP address. I need to put the IP address of my NAS device. So I have that correct now. I'll type Control O to save, Control X to exit. So I'll clear my screen here. So to test it, I want to type sudo space app space update. I'll hit enter. And if we have an error here, it means it's set up wrong. So I will actually change this somehow. I'll change this to a three. And I'll run this. And you see it's not connecting. So that means there's an error. So that's what you're looking for if it isn't working. You'll need to go back in and check your configuration. Change this back. So I'll clear my screen. So if I actually go into that directory, which is etc app.conf.d, I'll type ls. It's possible that you set up a proxy before, and that will show up under 90 curtain dash apt proxy. So I'll type cat space 90 curtain dash app proxy. And I've commented these out. So this is when I had set it up during the install process. When you're installing Ubuntu server, you can enter in a proxy. So when I entered that in there, it stored it in this file. And I could have left it there, but for making this video, I commented this out and showed you how to start it from scratch. But that's just something to be aware of is when you're installing Ubuntu server, you can enter the proxy in right when you're doing the install and it can take advantage of it right away. If you're doing a graphical install, it's a little bit trickier and I have a video on that that I'm going to link below. So I'll run sudo space app space update again, since I canceled it last time. Okay, I'll clear my screen. I'll type sudo space app space upgrade. I'll say why. So what this is doing now is it's installing the packages from AppCashRNG. So AppCashRNG is downloading them and storing them, and then it's downloading them on this server. So if I had another machine later that I'm doing the same updates to, it will pull the packages locally as opposed to downloading them off the internet again. So you could in theory see a slight slowdown the first time you use it, and then it should speed up every time after that. And I don't notice a huge slowdown the first time I'm using it. It's faster than my internet for the most part. So while this is happening, I'll go in here to my DSM. So this is up and running. It looks like it's taking 128 megabytes right now. I'll close out of this. If I go to File Station and open up AppCashRNG, we'll see some folders in here. We have UBU Rep. I'll open that. And then we have this. And we have the files in here. I don't know the exact structure of this, but it's storing things in here is what you need to know. So let's see if pool had anything into it. So it looks like it's storing some files in here. You don't want to mess with these because I imagine that could screw things up. Okay, well, I don't need to show you that being finished, but that's all for this video. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.